Hey guys, Pam from Roy Dragon again. So I got another shipment of seeds. Now, I'm going to be honest and say that I've already gone through the seeds, so it's not going to be a surprise for me, but it'll be a surprise for you. I am, however, going to put on my glasses so I can actually see what I'm reading. So, if you saw my seed haul from Baker Creek just before Christmas, I think, or just after, either way, you'll remember I had been thrilled about the the colors, you know, the, the pictures on the envelopes. This is seeds and such. So they don't really give you a lot of information. And one thing I'm noticing, unless it's in code somewhere, I don't see where they put the year that the seeds are for. So ever since I've done seeds and such, I have just gone ahead with every new batch I get and put the year that the seeds are, are for. So these guys were packed for 2024. At least that's what they're supposed to be. And not a lot of instructions on the particular variety or even type of plant the seeds are for. Um, this one is for Sweet Alyssum. This is Aphrodite mix. And there is a little bit of information just kind of generalized as to just in general how to do annuals that are good for the sun. And then it gives different, you know, like there's a grouping of alyssum, cathedral bells, dahlias, dianthus, lobelia, marigolds, so on and so forth. So there's like three different classifications of seeds that you might be able to to do, but it doesn't really give you timing, like which part, you know, is it before the last frost or after the last frost or those kinds of things. So, you know, this, you know, I love seeds and such. They've done me, done me well over the years, but um, even going onto their website, sometimes the information on the individual variety so most of the time when I go to seeds and such it's because I've seen the variety on a different website and since a lot of things I'm not too awfully sure you know if they're going to work things like tomatoes and things like that I would rather buy a little packet with like you know five to ten seeds or something and then find out if it works or not and then I know if it does work to buy more next year um so, Seeds and Such is out of Georgia, Alberta, or Augusta, Georgia. And, uh, you know, most of the time with Seeds and Such, you just, if you're an, you're a rank beginner or something like that, you might want to go to a different type of website that gives a little bit more information. Now, I know, you know, Sweet Alyssum is listed as Alyssum here, either way for me, Aphrodite Mix. Now, I know this is the one that has the multicolors, you know, the pinks and the blues and the purples and the whites and things like that. Um, if I didn't know that, you know, I would have to write it down either on the seed pack or in my little spreadsheet on my computer about them. Um, it does, however, one thing I've noticed, they give a guaranteed germination ranking. So sweet alyssum on these guys at 60% or higher. Other sweet alyssums that I have grown, um, I've had a lot of germination, probably. I'm not going to go and count every one of them, but, you know, it was enough that I had a lot of sweet alyssum. So, uh, so it's nice that they put that down. There are 200 seeds in here. They're teeny tiny. So you have to be kind of careful with your, you have to pinch out a little bit and sprinkle where you're going to do it. Generally with a listen, what I'll do is I will get, um, either I will do like a little six pack, the little things with the little individual holes in them and do a little bit in each of the six. Or I take one, a, you know, maybe a, a two inch cup 
and sprinkle that on top and just do that. And then later on, after the seeds have come up, I will go and transplant them into more individualized containers. So sweet alyssum, one of the things I really like sweet alyssum, uh, I haven't been growing them that long, like two or three years. This will be my third or fourth year. I can't remember now. But the bees like them. They're very low growing, so you can plant them underneath taller growing things. And I think I told this story in one of the other videos I pr I've posted in the last couple days that the first year I grew sweet alyssum, um, I, I planted them, I put the, you know, I planted the seeds too early and they were basically flowering in the little containers inside before it was warm enough for me to put them outside. And so I went ahead and planted them. And of course, transplant shock, they didn't do a whole lot. They kind of sat there and stagnated. And I kind of gave up on them. And then I think after like a rainstorm or something like that came through and watered everything. Best watering system in the world. If you get enough rain, you know, I'd rather it rain than me have to go out there with a hose. But I digress again. Um, but, you know, I went outside a few days later and there were masses of I think I planted the, the white variety of sweet alyssum first, the first time. And there are these masses of little white flowers with bees all over them. And um, so I didn't give up. And then they kept flowering even all during the summer, all into fall. It wasn't until it got a really hard frost that it, it killed them back. So I am a big fan of sweet alyssum. Not going to get a whole lot of like, you know, flower displays or anything like that. And they don't make that big of an impact, you know, not dramatic or anything like that. But they're good filler and they're pretty and they actually smell kind of good too. All right. These guys, I've got two different dahlia seeds. I love, I love this dahlia seed thing. Buying the, the tubers is fraught especially with at the end of the year when you have to store them inside, whether or not they'll, they'll survive. I still don't have that knack. And I told you I was trying the whole thing of just, you know, mulching, leaving them in the ground and mulching them real good. Maybe they'll come back, maybe they won't. But if they don't, I have more. So I've got two different varieties here. Um, this is the Harlequin mix and the Figaro mix. And I don't remember what was special because I don't have pictures to show you, but I will throw up pictures of what they're supposed to look like. Um, I think one is taller than the other, I want to say. Most of the ones that come from seeds are anywhere from like 12 to maybe, maybe two feet high so far. Um, not really a whole lot of varieties that I've seen yet that, that do grow, you know, six and seven feet tall and are going to give you the, the long stems for putting in flower arranging and stuff like that. They're just nice little, instead of marigolds or something like that. They're very cheery. They do very well. I've, I grew them. Some of them were in full sun. Some of them were shaded out by other taller plants. The, you know, the ones that were shaded a little bit got a little leggy, but nothing, nothing I couldn't deal with. Um, so I'll be getting those seeded. What I may do is just go ahead and plant a few of each variety. I think I now have four or five different kinds of dahlia seeds. So I may plant a few of each just so I have some variety. In. Okay, this is salvia. Salvia is related to sage, the kind of sage you use for cooking, but you don't eat salvias. Um, salvias are good bee plants um, and you can find salvias in colors that have the flowers that have blue, kind of like this, the garden sage does. Um, and then it runs all the, the gamut of, you know, into reds and things like that. I have grown the reds before, and I guess I just didn't like them as much. I don't know. I'm usually a, a red kind of girl, but for some reason, this is a, a variety called Victoria Blue. And it just, it's a very nice, darker, lavender type blue color. Bees like it, and they keep going most of my Victoria Blue salvias, I've got others that are out in the garden right now that have been there for two or three years. Some of them do come back, some of them don't. So I just keep this on hand and 
plant out a couple and put them in different spots just so I never run out. Um, this is a variety. I did not purchase this. This was a pack of free seed um, seeds and such is another one of the, the companies that send you free, free seed. Um, this is a sunflower called Tayo. And it's just general pretty, oh, you know, of course, I'll throw up pictures of everything so you see what that looks like. Um, five or six feet tall, I think it is just sunflower. Um, the name denotes that it's probably originated in Japan, so it's a Japanese variety. Potentially, if it's not, I'll correct it in the comments below. Um, so that I'll get direct sown out in the garden, like in May, early June, something like that. And I actually, most of the time, my sunflowers are self-sown because of the sunflower seeds that fall out of my bird feeders. But uh, every once in a while, I'll throw out something that's actually intentional, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the next, all the rest of these are um, veggie plants. Uh, I think I mentioned before that seeds and such kind of um, normal kind of mundane types of herbs and things like that. And again, if I see something in another catalog that I like and I see it in seeds and such, you know, I'll buy that just to try it out because they, you know, they send a few seeds at a time kind of deal. Okay, so I got another type of broccoli. I have, currently I have already in my seed saver box, I have a variety called Castle Dome, and then I have a variety called Early Spr Sprouting Broccoli. The Early Spr Sprouting Broccoli, I may or may not be able to grow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying. It's a variety that I've seen growing in a lot of YouTubers that are in the UK, Britain. And evidently it's the kind that you plant in the fall and then it overwinters. And then in the spring, it starts sending out little, little shoots of broccoli instead of entire heads. Um, so I was intrigued. I did this, I didn't do it this fall, but I did it last year. It died. It just got frozen, killed. Of course, we also had the Christmas around Christmas time where you had single dig digit temperatures going on. So, you know, I'm surprised more things in my garden didn't get killed. But this is a variety called Godzilla, which as the name kind of suggests, um, should be a big heading type. And uh, I do... I've had success doing broccoli in the past, but it's one of those things, you, it's kind of the Goldilocks effect. The weather has to be right down the center. You can't have it too cold for too long or get too warm too fast because it, it'll send it up into to flowering and going to seed kind of deal. So um, we're gonna give this one a try. I don't really know, I can't remember now. If this variety, I think this is one of the varieties that's good in heat. In, well, not summer heat, but when it gets a little too warm, it'll, it'll last a little longer. So I may have also gotten that. Um, got two, well, got several repeats here. Um, my onion seeds, I have um, candy onions and Sierra Blanca onions. Onions are the kind of thing that you grow from seed that you kind of really want to make sure that you maybe have newer seed on hand. Um, I have in the past kept onion seeds and replanted a couple years later and they didn't germinate very well. And I'm like, wah, wah, you know, I don't want to grow onions anymore. And then I realized, yeah, onions don't do well if you keep the seed too long. So these are guys, uh, this again, this is the 27th of December. So around the 15th of uh, January, so in less than three weeks, I'm going to be planting all of my onion seeds, getting them under, you know, a, you know, a little bit of a seed mat and uh, at least until they germinate and then, a, you know, grow light to keep them going. And then I'll probably plant them out mid-March, again, depending on whether, you know, if it's a really hard, hard, hard winter, um, you know, I may, I may uh, 
delay planting them outside until April or something like that. But generally you can get them in the ground. They're, they're fairly hardy. It's just one of those things that if you plant them out and then the next day it goes down to 10 degrees or something like that, yeah, you're gonna have dead onions, but. Large, large part of gardening is keeping track of what your uh, weather forecast is for the next bit. Um, needed to get more of my Chablis pepper. This is uh, a type, it's, I don't know if it's actually listed as a bell pepper, but it looks like one. And it's one of the first bell type peppers that I have grown that, because in the past when I have grown any kind of bell pepper, the walls have been really thin. It's been mostly skin that I've been eating. And uh, that's not why I eat my, my peppers. I want the actual uh, pepper flesh. Um, and this is a variety, it's, it's really actually kind of pretty. It's tasty, but it starts off kind of like a light chartreuse yellow green color. And uh, then it kind of matures into kind of a cherry red, hence the name Chablis, I guess. Um, but they're very pretty and uh, they grow well for me. Once I discovered the fact that peppers, even though they like hot, warmer weather, um, they don't like having the sun beating down on them. So I planted my peppers this last year under shade cloth and uh, they did really well. Um, I'm gonna try a different kind of manipulation because I thought they were a little too shaded. I may try getting a different shade cloth that's a little less because I've got one shade cloth that's 40% and one that's 50%. I'm either gonna look for one that's like 20, 25% if there's such a thing, or just trying to have some kind of like a gauzy uh, fabric that goes over them, just kind of help cut the, the, the sun a little bit, a little tiny bit. But, uh, so yeah, Chablis pepper, I do recommend. Um, okay. So now we're starting into three kinds of peppers that I've never grown, or not peppers, tomatoes that I've never grown before. Um, this is a variety called Zenze, Z-E-N-Z-E-I, and it's a paste type tomato um, that's supposed to be a little more disease resistant than others. Um, so I'm gonna give those a try. For some reason, paste tomatoes just, they give me trouble. I can grow slicing tomatoes, I can grow cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes and things like that. Paste tomatoes, either the plants just don't grow for me or they succumb to diseases and things like that. Last year I grew a, a San Marzano variety, just did not do well. I even took them into the back, you put them on the back deck in pots since they were they, the, those ones were supposed to be determinant and they just never really did very well. So, so I'm gonna try these guys, see if they they do be any good. I've also got a paste tomato variety that I got at Baker Creek. That's the, uh, I believe, Baker Creek. It's the um, oh, Bellatrix variety. I grew Bellatrix in 22 and it did well for me. I grew it again in 23, let this last year, didn't do anything. So I don't know if it was just one of those things or if I planted it in a spot it didn't like, but we're gonna give the, we're gonna give Bellatrix one more chance and then that'll be it for her. Hopefully Zenze. I think I'm getting another kind of paste tomato too, but I can't remember what it is. So there's gonna be another seed haul for sure, I know, once I get them here. Uh, another one that's kind of new to me is a variety, a variety called Sun Sugar. This is one of those in the same line as Sun Gold. I tried Sun Gold last year um, for the first time. Um, was very pleasantly surprised. They were very tasty, very prolific, um, and they survived. I mean, they were producing even when all the other tomatoes that I planted at the same time were dying because of you know disease pressure and things like that. So I'm definitely gonna be going Sun Gold again. I'm gonna see about Sun Sugar. Sun Sugar is supposed to be um, similar to Sun Gold, but sweeter. 
So we'll, we'll see if there's any big difference. We'll do a comparison test. And then this is the other free pack of seeds. It's a tomato variety called uh, 42 Day, which means that it's a, a very early tomato. Uh, I think this is also a cherry tomato. Um, oh, I didn't write down how long. A lot of times with the uh, the veggie type stuff, especially tomatoes, when I write the date, the, you know, the year uh, that I got, I received them for on the packet for, for seeds and such. I'll also write how days of duration um, it takes for it to mature into a actual usable plant. Um, so pretty sure this one's 42 days, um, but it's also supposed to be, it's a, a cherry, kind of red cherry. So we'll give it a try. It was free. All right, guys. Well, that is it. Relatively short for me video. Didn't even have to take a break. Um, when I get my other, I've got another one I've still got in the pike. I'm waiting to finish that raised bed for my blueberry. Um, once my back can take hunching over, which I'm not helping myself right now by hunching over the table. Um, but once I get that taken care of, we'll do some more videoing. Um, I hear you, Beaker. I know you want to come in. Cats. Cats don't care if you got things to do. They just do cat things. Um, so, okay. So that's it for the, the seeds and such. Um, I just got a, a mailing of, uh, seed catalogs. You don't even have to buy me Christmas presents. You can just get me seed catalogs and I'll be very happy. Gift card too would help, but we won't push it. We won't push it. Um, trying to think if there's anything I needed to add to this. If not, if I do, I'll add a different segment. But this should be it. Um, all right, guys. So I will talk to whoever later. Hopefully have the video about the raised bed going before we get into New Year's. Depends on the weather. We've had two days of very dreary weather, Christmas Day and Boxing Day yesterday. It's finally the sun's coming out here, but it's very wet. Very, very wet. So uh, hopefully I get out there and finish it up. I've got three walls up. I just have to put the, the fourth wall up and screw everything together. Hopefully I have everything squared up, but we won't worry about that too much. Um, so we'll have the grand unveiling for that. We'll have another seed haul, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I'm sure that's, there's not even going to be, and that, that's not even going to be the end of that because I'm pretty sure I'll do several more seed hauls before the end of the year. And hopefully once I get more seed catalogs, I can kind of show you stuff, ones that I get. So if you, you've never heard of them, you can, send away for them um but i think that's it so everyone have a great one and hopefully i'll see you before the end of the year